Welcome to Thoughts and Teens in Focus. I'm your host, Patricia Trim. Welcome you to another edition of Thoughts and Teens in Focus. You know this week our topic will be based on mothers because this is May is the month of mothers. And we celebrate all mothers, young mothers, grandmothers, aunt mothers, even daddy mothers. We are celebrating mothers for the month of May. And... Um, and to, to, for our children, because mothering is a job. Mothering a child is a job. Mothering a child gives you experience, gives you love, and gives you understanding. Even if you do not have a child and you are a woman, you are still a mother. Because once you can give a child an advice, once you can sit and talk with a child, that's mothering a child. If you are in the church, you're in the church, organization, wherever there are children, and you have to deal with children, you are a mother. And you are mothering all children. From babe to teenagers, they all need the mothering love. And even if they get older, they still need that mothering advice, although they may tell themselves, hmm, I know it all. They still need some kind of encouragement. They still need some kind of support. And they still need you to be there to give them that type of support and strength. Mothers, as I would say, a mother is a mother wherever she may be. A mother is a mother whatever she may do. A mother is a mother wherever she may go. Because a mother love will never fail. Once you give birth to that child, no matter how, you know, these children, these children today, they are, they are very, very much want you to make, to say things. But you know what? We got to remember, in our days, we did it too. And we get some good slaps. But I know today, Slaps and spanking is not the, the rule of America or the rule of the world. But you know what? Back in the days, the prisons and the, 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 the prisons were not filled because parents took it into their hand and correct their children. Sometimes they beat us real bad, but, you know, we didn't die at least. Some of us did not end up in the prison. Today, our children are being very young, ending up in the prison, ending up in homes because of parental preferences, parents having the right to correct their children. We not say to beat them, to kill them, but we have the right, parents should have the right to correct their children. Adults should have the right to speak to children. Adults should have the right to say what you're doing is wrong and not being afraid. Today, grandmothers and, 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 and parents are very much afraid to talk to their children. Why? Because if you talk to them too hard, they will try to attack you. You talk to children on the road too hard, on the buses, they will try to attack you. So, you know, as I always say, Parenting, 
parenting did not start in the school. It did not start in the, at the street corner. It starts in a mother's womb. And as you get um, have that baby, and the things that you do, that's what will affect the child. When you have that baby, you talk to that baby. You tell them how much you love them. They understand, they laugh, they listen. You scream at that child, that child will be so angry and be watching at you. So they have sense, they know when it's right and when it's wrong. And that's the time that we as, as mothers or young mothers should take their time to train their children in the right direction. The, the most important thing that parents are responsible for their children. They're responsible to teach them to pray. Prayers is the key to success. Prayers is a blessing. Open their heart in prayers. Rise in the morning with prayers. Teach them all day to keep the, keep the word of God in their heart, in their mind, and teach them what is love because God loved them. Mothers love them. Fathers love them. So they will show what is love. We know there are some children, but we say children at risk, children at risk, sometimes because of lack of love and they're not in the school, they're, they're not having it in the home. And so when they go to school, whatever they receive home, that's what they want to retaliate back outside. They become a bully because they were taught about bullying. They were taught as they wake up in the morning to be bullied or to be screamed at. So they feel that is okay. And then they will go back and do the same thing. Scream, at, scream, fight. And, you know, that is not, you know, that is not right because they fight dangerously. In our days, yes, we fought, <laughs> we fight, but it was hand to hand and, you know, it was hand, hand to hand. You know, you hit somebody with something, you go to jail. So the, the, this is what, um, as parents in the church, sometimes I wonder, we have so many churches and we have so many young people on drugs, in the prison, in prostitution, and everything that you could think negative of. How do we eradicate this type of behavior? How do we eradicate what is going on? How do we talk to our children? They have a lot of community programs in the community, but as I say, it didn't begin in the community program. Yes, the instructors will give them and teach them what they come about, the training, but discipline and conduct begins at home. Parents have to take that responsibility and prevent their children to be in the devolved pattern of negative neg negativity. We said, where does manners begin? Manners begin from the time that child is born. You teach them the right thing. Today, parents allow their children to be slapping at them, slapping at them, no. You slap me, I slap your hands very hard so that you will know you're not to hit your mother or you're not to hit ones that are older and you, you are a child and you got to act like a child. You will be treated like a child. Because when you start hitting your mother or you start hitting your, 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 your peers, you develop an attitude to become a gang leader because you want to hit at everybody that comes across. So that is where manners begin. So we got to train them from the time that they think, yes, yes, ma'am, no, ma'am, excuse me. Yes, sir, no, sir, excuse me, please, may I, thank you. These are the things that when they are trained like that, you find them to be very respectable, respectable to the adults 
respectable to their peers, respectable to elderly folks, respectable to the teachers, you find that they will be very certain because they know what is right from what is wrong. And they were not able to follow the pattern of being in gangs or being afraid of gangs um, because they don't have the ability to stand up and say no. So, and telling a child, I love you, is a word that should be used at all the time in the home. I love you, have a blessed day, I love you, um, have your manners in the classroom, respect your teacher, and those things that I love you, it's a powerful word. I love you in the name of Jesus, bless your children with I love you in the name of Jesus. I bless you in the name of Jesus. Because when you pour those words, your words are spirit and they are life and they shall accomplish with they are sent. When you pour those words over your children, they become better children because that spirit of life, that spirit of Jesus, that spirit of God overs over them. No matter where they are, you pour that prayers of love. You pour that prayers of love over their life, over their, their, their school work. Sometimes you may find them not being the best that they wanted to be. Yes, children, not all children have come to have to be scholars or to have a degree. Not all of them are come to do that because they have, God give each and every one of us a spiritual gift, a spiritual understanding. He wants us to do that whatever he gives us to do, we will do it in love. We will do it in happiness. We will be, be very pleased to do what is our gift. And as I say, you know, parents need to see where they have their creative ideas, see where they, their gifts are, and work towards that. If they are to books, work towards books. If they are to technology, work towards technology. If they are in the cake making or the baking or the cooking, work towards that. What show I admire is these little children on um the the oh god this show the little the little the little young cooks on the show with um, Hell's Kitchen. And these little babies, they are cooking, and that is what you know. I want to see more of our African children being a part, being a part of that. I want to see more of our children taking part in their career activity. So there is where mothers and fathers take that responsibility. Family unity is a prayers. Prayers in the morning, prayers at lunch, prayers at dinner. Make prayers your priority in the home. Make prayers when you talk to them. Let prayers be their, their speciality. Let prayers be a part of their life. And that's where you will have unity because in prayers, unity will develop. Mental illness is among our young people a lot. And we need to assist them. Some of them are being damaged because of their parental um, experience, parents on drugs, parents, you know, whatever it may be they have, and it wasn't taken care of the children and endure that same type of mental illness, lack of attention, lack of the emotional feelings. They need attention because they don't have attention. It, it, they start to get very sick and affected their brains and they become mentally and emotional and abuse when they are abused they become like that so we have to help them out in that way how does the church play a role to eradicate this dysfunctional system that plague in the community as 
as there are some very good churches, as my church, CCC Church, they have programs for the children and from the time they are babe, and that's what I'm saying, from the time they are baby, they have programs in there for them. They have classes for them. Parents can take their children to church, and they can have them um, taken care of. They don't have to leave their children home. They come. So CCC is a very good church where family orientation should begin because that is where your children are being taken care of. Any church that has that program for parenting and have that program that when children, um, when children, parents can take their children to church and they will able to take part and having them in that spiritual guidance at an early age, they will able to make a difference in our community. So that was nice talking to you on mothering and mothers are mothers wherever they may go. Mothers are mothers, whatever they may be. Mothers are mothers with or without children. Mothers love never fail. So that was nice talking with you on Thoughts and Teens. And as we just have this little part of mothering and loving our children, I like to say thank you for watching our program of being the mother and the, of what is mothering. Um, your role, your, what is mothering, parents' responsibility for a child, where does manners begin, family unity with prayers can make difference in a child development, mental illness among children are lack of attention and emotional abuse, how does the church play a role to eradicate this dysfunctional system that is plaguing the community. And you can take those words too and work on it and help your children out because they need it and they need your assistance. They need you. A mother's love is most important. Wherever you are, share that love. Share that motherly love to all that you meet today. I love you and God bless you all. That was Thoughts and Things in Focus with our Father's Day blessing. Um... Today I'm here speaking on behalf of speaking to you as a Guyanese. Yes, I am a Guyanese. And I am here on my show. I take this time to, to speak about our Guyana culture, our Guyana programs, and our beautiful Guyana. A land of many waters and rich resources and minerals. Yes, Guyana is found in South America, part of North America, the other side of North America. And um, it's the, well, now it's not, I understand, Billy speak English now. It, it was known as the only English-speaking country in the South America, on the borders of South America, of Guyana, we have um, Suriname, Brazil, Venezuela, many waters, and um, the Atlantic Ocean. We are surrounded by those waters. Um, our, we have, I think, over 360 islands in our Essequibo River. Guyana is so big, it's 83,000 square miles. The population is very, very small. Um, very, very small. But what I would like to uh, say today is not that um, I'm not so happy of what is taking place with the Guyanese community here in New York. Um, we are supposed to be coming together. We're supposed to be as Guyana and not as separated, divided as, as villages. We are the, the Guyanese and we're supposed to hold Guyana as one. And all villages, all schools, all other organizations that relates to Guyana should come together as one to be, um, to unite. I wanted to just relate to also on this situation that is going wrong, which is very horrible and terrible, and especially for 
our guy needs. And we got to stop this. We got to stop this, this nigga yard attitude of um, bringing down each other. Um, the Guyana Unity Movement, which was formed through the, which held the biggest march ever of Guyanese on Church Avenue or ever in, in the United States. It was a very big march and that was spearheaded by um, Cherie Fraser, who is the, from the District 17, which she was called and she gave her support and make that march one big spectacular march. I did not go to the march, but I saw it on um, Facebook. Um, but um, I, I'm a great supporter of her and whenever she calls me, I'm just ready because you stay there, you are a friend, be a friend to the end. Um, what we having now is that the Guyana Unity Movement is, because of the spectacular event and the professionalism of the event and the trustworthy of the Guyana Unity Movement groups, they have came up to have a three-day event inviting the president of Guyana to come and speak to his people because they will be having election coming up and he will need the Guyanese support in America. So this event is, is a presidential event and it, it is mainly for um, the Guyanese community, bringing them together and having the president there to give his speech and you know see how Guyanese can do better or assist in the production, promotion, and the building of Guyana because we are still small. We are still small. We're just about 750 and then we got about 350,000 of living in America. So even if, we, even if we all go back there, we will never meet up to the amount because our country is 83,000 square miles, a very big, big country and two little people. And it's full of, it's a swampy, it's, you know, it's, it's, it have rich resources, very rich resources. But we are too little to develop that country. And I think it's time we invite other, um, it's time we invite other countries, other nations, come in and be a part of Guyana. We need that help. We need to build. We cannot build by ourselves. I'm sure we need that building capacity to help us in Guyana. However, my talk today is, is about what is going on. And I, I feel to myself that as an CEO of organization and being a part of the community here and in Guyana, I feel to myself that what is going on, especially with the slander about the, the president of the uh, Guyana Unity Movement, who everyone knows is a very respectable person. And she's been slandered by Rickford Burke, who is well known, always slandering everybody. He did it to the, um, the council, um, congressional woman Clark and her mother. He did it to everybody that you know, that he knows doing something good in the community. That is what Wilfred Burke do. He always tries to degrade people in the community and that's not nice, you know, because he's not, he's not doing anything for Guyana. He just write letters and make himself popular and always slandering people and, you know, to make him feel better. He takes people's personality and try to destroy it. And this man is a Guyanese man. He needs to stop. He needs to stop. Something has to stop that man because that is not nice what he's doing. Many people he has hurt, you know, causes the, the friction of, you call it crab in a barrel. Someone is trying to do something for the, the community, for the Guyanese community to promote, to bring, bring structure, to bring stability, to bring everybody to one. And someone out there who is just a slanderous person, Rickford Burke, is just trying to destroy other people's character. And this, it, it ought to stop. This is not something that should continue going on because it make Guyanese look bad. It make Guyana look bad. It make other nations always saying there is always a fight 
in Guyana, uh, our own Guyanese. We are known to always having conflict with the Indian community. And we are here, we, we should try to make that, you know, to let this situation come together as one in the organization of the Guyanese community. Yes, we are blessed and we are rich in resources, but we don't have en enough hands in Guyana to build our resources. We don't. Have so from thoughts and things I say, I love you and then goodbye until we meet again with our talk about bringing up your children. Ah. <sighs>